We have a very special guest here joining us on the air this morning, the founder of Coca-Cola Broadcasting. Please welcome Mr. Gary Coca-Cola. Mr. Coca-Cola, good morning. Good morning, Joey. Thank you so very much uh, for joining us this morning, sir. Uh, I appreciate it, uh, and thank you for taking the time out of your day to be with us here. And, uh, you know, I was telling my listeners and viewers uh, earlier uh, this morning that uh, you and I had a private conversation, and we talked about how we wanted to have a weekly segment to talk about uh, everything and anything, and, of course, all the things uh, that are great about Coca-Cola Broadcasting and all the things that are coming up on all the television stations. But also, uh, I, I told my listeners and viewers that I wanted them to get to know uh, the the man that has given us the opportunity uh, here at the Eggs, Bacon, and Joey Morning Show to be on television because, you know, I am just fascinated with uh, your story uh, of how you got Coca-Cola Broadcasting going and just your background. And uh, I just want uh, this first segment uh, for our listeners and uh, viewers to, to get to know you, sir, if that's okay. Well, that's great. Thank you, Joey. Uh, it's been a long ride, but it's been a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, sometimes what you're doing reminds me of me a long, long time ago. Because I started out on air back when I was 17 years old. Oh, wow. So on air, was that uh, locally or was that uh, in Hollywood? Where was that ex exactly? No, no it, was, it was locally. It was here in Fresno. And um, a long, long time ago, there was a local dance party on television once a week. It was called the... Uh, TV record hop, and uh, I was the host along with uh, one of the young ladies from Bullard High School, and we, uh, along with the guy who started it all, his name was Al Radka, well known to folks from many, many years ago, probably not your age, but uh, back in the 60s, uh, remembers uh, Big Al, and Al was on the air for many years in the Fresno market, and uh, that's uh, how I got my start, Joey, uh, being on TV once a week on the TV Record Hop, a local dance party, similar to what Dick Clark was doing years ago with American Bandstand. No, that is uh, absolutely uh, amazing, and I remember you showing me video footage of uh, uh, of those uh, productions, and it just, I mean, back in that time, and obviously, uh, do, would you call it uh, an innovation uh, here for local TV at that time? It was, it was, it was the only thing of its kind. You know, going back that far, Joey, there were only three TV stations in Fresno way back then. I'm not going to say the year, because then you'll figure out how old I am. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, three TV stations every Saturday afternoon from uh, 4.30 to 5.30, the record hop was on the air. It uh, it was uh, an innovative type show. But you got to remember, Joey, way back then there was no color TV and there was no videotape, so what we did, we did live every week. Uh, we had recording artists stop by in Fresno from time to time, and they lip-synced their, their record, which was kind of the, the norm in those days. And uh, it was very, very popular. Lots of people loved watching it, saw the local teenagers dancing on TV. And I wasn't much older than the teenagers when I started out. Now, uh, Gary, you also mentioned, uh, you know, uh, about your story and it kind of taking a turn as well, because uh, you, you you obviously had the background of TV and being involved uh, with with television uh, locally, uh, but then you also had uh, a big background uh, with your father's uh, business as well, right? Uh, my father was a farmer, so uh, being living in this area, he was a grower of peaches, plums, nectarines, and table grapes. Uh, in the Fresno County area. And um, after I had gone down to Los Angeles to meet up with an agent because I, I thought I wanted to be a game show host on TV in those days, I think I was 20 or 22, somewhere in that range, um, the agent basically talked me out of going into the business. So I came back to Fresno and told my father that I didn't have much luck in Hollywood. Uh, the agent basically said uh, uh, that you need to think about what kind of a career you're going to have if you get into that industry, and you need to think about where you're going to be when you're 40 years old. So when I started thinking about that, I thought, you know what, I want to go back and talk with my father, and maybe being in the produce industry is the best thing for me to do. So I did, and he accepted me into the industry, and I 
ended up selling the fruit. I was a, a broker, a distributor of tree fruits and grapes, and did that for 22 years. 22 years, but during that time also, uh, you know, you were also kind of uh, cultivating and creating a plan uh, that would essentially bring you back to your dream and uh, creating a, a television station here locally in the area. That's, that's correct, Joey. I started out uh, applying in 1977 for a full-power TV station permit with the FCC. It took seven years, and in 1984, we received a construction permit to build Channel 59, which is now currently on the air. It's the CW affiliate. I sold that station and got out of the, uh, Channel 59 in 1991, and uh, then that's when I started Coca-Cola Broadcasting and started building more stations, and our first full power station after I had sold 59 was Channel 43, which is still on the air today, KGMC, which incidentally bears my, my initials, Gary Morris Coca-Cola. And that came on the air in 1992 with a, uh, a, a video jukebox, something that was very, very unique in those days. They called it The Box, and you could dial into a 900 telephone number, and you could play a music video. Now, now, now you're going into my time because I definitely called the box uh, during my uh, early years. I called the box, requested my video, and it was very, very fun. I enjoyed doing it. My brothers and I would always get around the television screen, call the box, and try to see if our video came on. Uh, so that definitely uh, made a difference in my life because at that time, I feel like the box, if you didn't have MTV, if you didn't have cable, t cable television, I mean, that was your MTV, which was the box. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And, and that's really what, that whole idea is what got me into the broadcasting business back when I first applied for Channel 59. We were going to turn Channel 59 into an over-the-air uh, MTV. The only problem was, financially, it didn't pencil out for us to do music videos in the 80s and 90s, so we ended up doing Christian television. That's how Channel 59 got started and started successfully in the black, uh, no red ink, which was great because that's the way things should have been. And uh, that's, that's really, I got, I got to do what I wanted to do, but it took many years later, 1991, 92, when we started uh, the music uh, video jukebox. Now, uh, with uh, all the uh, history now, with uh, Coca-Cola Broadcasting, the television stations, I mean, you know, uh, what happened from those two stations uh, then increased on the expansion side of things, where now you started, you know, having television stations pretty much all throughout the country, right? Well, we, we concentrated on the, uh, on the cities in California. We... We branched out into Bakersfield, Sacramento, Salinas, Monterey, San Luis Obispo, Santa Maria. And then we had a station up in uh, Redding, California, a uh, Hispanic station, Azteca America, up there, which I sold about four or five years ago to a good friend of mine. And uh, then we also have a cluster of stations in Boise, Idaho, which is the capital of Idaho. So that's really uh, what we have today. And, you know, Joey, a lot of people don't understand the difference between high-power stations and low-power stations, but I was one of the pioneers in low-power television stations. They were a lot simpler to build and put on the air, and so we started doing that in the 90s and in the 2000s, and now we've got a cluster of stations, probably around 28 low-power stations, and then we have the high power in Fresno and Boise, Idaho. No, oh, wow, that is uh, that's definitely a, 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 an expansion as well from Fresno to Boise, Idaho. But even th all throughout the state of California, the different television stations that you had. Now, uh, one of the questions that I wanted to ask you this morning um, is uh, the state of television today. Uh, obviously, you had mentioned you had the high power, low powered stations. Uh, with everything going on from social media to uh, so many people being distracted with their phones nowadays, um, as a television pioneer, in my eyes, uh, what, what, what do you what do you feel about the state of television at this point? Well, television has changed. It's evolved, uh, obviously, uh, uh, in the last five to ten years 
more than at any other time, Joey, but I think the state of television is strong. I think it's going to change a little into the future. And uh, the name of the game, though, today for TV broadcasters is the spectrum that we operate on. You know that that little invisible frequency that the signal goes out over the air is where the value is in being a TV broadcaster. It's like real estate, invisible real estate. And we're going to be able to do some things because the standard for broadcasting and TV is undergoing another change coming up very soon to a standard called ATSC 3.0. And when that changes, we as broadcasters will be able to do things with our spectrum that we haven't ever been able to do, which opens us up for a whole nother a maraud of, of uh, advantages to viewers. We'll be able to probably become Wi-Fi uh, providers to the marketplace so that, you know, now you've got Comcast, you've got AT&T for Internet at your home, you've got unwired broadband. We'll become, as TV broadcasters, very similar to unwired broadband. We'll be able to provide Wi-Fi. And uh, a lot of people don't know that TV broadcasters in the future will be able to do that. So we'll be able to probably keep the marketplace uh, more competitive. Uh, we'll be able to f provide people uh, uh, with Wi-Fi at a less, lesser price than they're currently p paying now. And so I think that's going to be a tremendous, a tremendous advantage to our uh, viewers in the future. No, I think so too. And as you mentioned, you know, all these different providers are now providing those options where, you know, you get a television channel, next thing you know, it's, uh, do you want the internet with it? Do you want this with that? You know, all these different packages that they're creating. Uh, now, the Eggs, Bacon, and Joey Morning Show, we are on antenna television, over the air antenna television, uh, channel 32.3. Um, when I come on the air, I talk to my listeners, I talk to my viewers, and I say, hey, if you got an antenna, Plug that thing in. Go to channel 32.3. Watch us from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m., but also enjoy the ability to get a bunch of free TV on these antennas. How important uh, are antennas still in, in, in our day and age? They are very important. In fact, you know, a lot of folks don't realize, a lot of young folks didn't realize that TV was free at one time many, many years ago. And it still is. All you need is an outside antenna to get today about 120 digital TV channels. So if you just go down and pick up a $39 antenna at any uh, probably hardware store, you could probably buy it at Home Depot or Orchard Supply or something like that. Or you can come to Fresno and go to my friend's store, Ventura TV and Appliance, located uh, on Ventura and Orange Avenue in Fresno. Been there for many, many years. They specialize in the sales of antennas. And uh, for thirty nine ninety five, you just put that antenna outside up on the roof, and you'll get 120 free channels with any digital TV. All you have to do is hook up the antenna to the TV set and scan, and you'll come up with all of these different local channels. Yeah, and, and, you know, a lot of people, uh, you know, kind of get the misconception about antennas, too, where they're thinking, oh, they're those big towers that used to be installed on the top of the homes. No, they're little compact antennas, and, uh, I mean, it's very easy to set up. I got mine set up at home, and it was like, it, looked, it literally took me less than 10 minutes. Well, there you go. And, and of course, outside is better than putting the inside antennas. I know you've seen commercials on TV, Joey, for uh, inside antennas for 1995, I believe. Those aren't as good because you you really won't get all 120 channels that are available with the inside antenna. But with an outside antenna, you'll get everything from the low end of the spectrum, channel seven, all the way up to channel 61. Well, uh, you know, with uh, your experience in television, uh, what are some of the, the, the shows that uh, you like to watch uh, on TV or that are keeping you excited about uh, television these days? Well, you know, I, I watch the new network shows. I, uh, I'm a, I'm a uh, viewer of, uh, of the music shows, love the music shows. In fact, I just uh, watched the, uh, and now this was on uh, cable the other night, 
but I watched the MTV Music Awards. Did you happen to see them? I did, yes, I did. And at the Music Awards, I got to tell you, it's definitely changed uh, from what it used to be back in the you know '90s. Uh, you know, the Music Awards now. I feel like uh, there's a lot of uh, ADD uh, going on. They're telling you, "Hey, coming up in two minutes, and then in five minutes, and then in seven minutes, and then all these different things with social media." Uh, you definitely have to uh, be a little aggressive uh, when watching those shows because, uh, man, there's just a lot of things going on. Well, you know that I, I like anything that's connected with music, and so any music show uh, uh, on television is, is something that I enjoy watching. But, uh, you know, one of the things that we brought to the marketplace, Joey, and maybe a lot of folks uh, who are listening and watching you today don't realize, but one of the networks that is now the number one nostalgia network in the country is one called Me TV. And that's on our channel 43.6 and also on Ventura's channel 13.1. But that has all the great old shows from the 60s, the 70s, the 80s. And um, all you have to do is go to the Coca-Cola TV website. And there's a banner on the left side. Click on the banner that says Our Stations. And there's a full list of all of the different networks that we carry on all of our local stations. And you'll be amazed at the uh, amount of programming. <clears throat> well, the amount of programming that uh, we have on the air every day, 24 hours, each channel is on the air. You know, Joey, back when I started, TV stations used to sign off the air at midnight every night. So there was a there was an end time for TV stations, huh? An end time, a start time, and an end time. Well, in a sense, in a sense, they kind of still do nowadays, but it's like the paid programming that comes on, right? Yes, yeah. There's a lot of paid programming, and, uh, and the reason for that is that TV broadcasters are constantly looking for ways to make a buck. I mean, uh, me included. So infomercials bring in some good revenue for us, and of course, advertising today, as you have you have found out, advertising today is a tough business because there's a lot of people looking for the advertising dollar the internet included you know what you can buy ads on facebook you can buy ads on google and a lot of the folks are spending their money buying internet but you got to remember the internet is only talking to your friends it's only your circle just like you with your facebook friends uh, you you want to reach outside that circle, and television can do that. Social media is great. I'm not knocking it. But if you're an advertiser and you're looking to grow your business, you need to reach outside social media because it's a limited amount of people who are on social media. And it's interesting that you bring that up because I had a conversation with the program coordinator for the Kings County District Attorney's Office yesterday here on the show, and she had mentioned that, uh, you know, she puts her flyer up for the event, and uh, she puts that up all over social media, but sometimes a flyer doesn't really give you the information that you really need to know. Uh, and when she was able to come onto my show yesterday, she was able to give the background of the program and talk about, you know, a more in-depth look at to what the uh, program that's going to be happening next week for Victim Rights Awareness Month uh, next week in Hanford. Uh, you know, she was able to give more detailed information and a flyer on social media cannot do that. So we got a lot of people that were listeners and viewers yesterday that were going, man, you know, we're going to attend this event event because we didn't know that we could even attend there you go yeah absolutely no you can get the word out radio television still does the job you know i'm i'm the guy who says to, to any advertiser don't just do social media put your money in print put your money on the radio and put your money in television in addition to social media then you're covering the whole playing field well, I told my listeners and viewers uh, this morning that this is going to be a weekly segment, and uh, you know we're going to we're going to touch on everything, uh, not only television but just the the marketplace. and And I thought we gave not only some great insight on your background, Mr. Coca-Cola, but we gave some great insight this morning for some business owners that are listening right now that are thinking, "Oh, I don't need to spend money on radio anymore or print or all those things." Hey, those platforms are still out there, and people are still using them. Yeah, absolutely. And, and if they don't think about uh, the old-time print, uh, radio, and television, they are missing the boat because that's more than half the market. I mean, social media, don't get me wrong, is big today, but you still need the other elements to grow your business. 
Well, and that's this is uh, uh, something to all those local business owners, anybody that's listening right now that says, oh, I don't need the advertisement. I have enough uh, customers already. Uh, we're, we're fine. We're, we're too busy. I mean, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Budweiser, Bud Light, are, do they have too many customers? They're still advertising. Stop advertising, so they must know something, right? It's branding. You have to brand your business. You have to get your name out there because if you're getting your name out and your competitors aren't, guess who the people are going to come and see? <laughs> exactly. No, I absolutely agree. Well, Mr. Coca-Cola, uh, we are out of time this morning, but uh, I am so excited about what's to come on this uh, segment here uh, with you uh, every uh, week here on the Eggs, Bacon, and Joey Morning Show. Uh, I want to thank you for taking the time out of your day this morning and uh, looking forward to some exciting segments in the next uh, weeks or so. Absolutely, Joey. Enjoyed it, and uh, we'll be talking to you again next week at this time. All right, Mr. Gary Coca-Cola, everybody of Coca-Cola Broadcasting. It's the Eggs, Bacon, and Joey Morning Show. Stay with us. Don't go anywhere.